Hey guys, you know it's the time of the year that jerk baits are a big player in tournament fishing or just your everyday fishing out on the lake. February, March, April, that's the time of the year fish love eating jerk baits. I want to give you a few tips on how to properly fish a jerk bait, what type of rod to put it on, what kind of line to put it on, and kind of what kind of jerk bait to kind of be focusing on to throw. Number one, let's talk about the jerk baits. Most important, you got to pick the right one. Uh, I personally like this size here. This is a River to Sea Trophy Minnow 98. This is a a really nice size and check out the color this is kind of like an American shad looking color it's, it's, it's beautiful you know it's a shad pattern that's what you want shad patterns you want something very realistic on your jerk baits you want things that look very detailed bass they really look at these jerk baits good paint jobs make a big difference and the river to sea products here obviously they've got all their bases covered on great paint jobs this bait right here is a suspending jerk bait it has a shallower lip and suspending means I'm going to jerk it down to the right depth, maybe six feet deep, and it's going to stay kind of at that depth. So as I pause between my jerks, this bait's going to stay down there. The other type of jerk bait that I use this time of the year is a little bit bigger one here. This is a fetch minnow. It has a longer lip. As you can tell between these two jerk baits, roughly the same size, but look at the difference in the lips. This bait here is going to get much deeper. This jerk bait here on eight pound fluorocarbon to ten pound fluorocarbons is going to get down to seven, eight feet deep, and again, it's going to suspend. This jerk bait here, Trophy Minnow 98, it's going to get down to about six feet deep on about eight or ten pound fluorocarbon. Now, talking about fluorocarbon, I really like throwing jerk baits on fluorocarbon. I don't like to throw them on monofilament. Monofilament will make that bait rise up a little bit, not get as deep. So again, throw it on light fluorocarbon line, uh, eight to ten pound test. If you go much heavier than ten pound, it really affects the way these baits twitch through the water. And again, jerk baits are very different than a lot of other lures out there. You have to have those little subtle little actions, that subtle detail. These things are very important. Again, that's why a good paint job is good and having the right size line because that allows that bait to give that little bit extra action, get that little bit extra depth out there. So make sure you throw it on eight or ten pound line. Now, let's talk about a rod. What do I throw my jerk baits on? I want to throw it on a medium action rod a six and a half foot to a seven foot rod depending. If I'm in open water making long casts like at Table Rock, seven foot rod's fine. If I'm trying to make accurate casts down a shoreline around docks, lay down trees, different things like that, a six and a half foot rod's gonna work best. Medium action is very important because as you jerk that jerk bait, you want that tip to be soft so it doesn't pull that bait forward too fast. You want a very erratic action. So here, let me show you how I do my jerk bait. I reel it down and I twitch, twitch, twitch and then pause. But as I twitch it, I throw the rod tip back towards the bait. It's very important. You want to twitch it on kind of a slack line and throw the rod tip back towards the bait. So as this bait has forward progress underwater and you throw that tip back, it creates slack. It's going to make that bait uh, tilt off to the side. Jerk this way, tilt off to the side. Jerk down, tilt off to the side. It's always going to change that bait's action just a little bit. And so throwing that rod tip back, jerking it down, and throwing it back toward, throwing the tip back on slack line is very important. It gives that bait the right action. You don't want to sit there and just jerk it on a tight line. Jerk, jerk, jerk on a tight line. What's going to happen is your jerk bait's just going to be going through the water like this here, and that's not as attractive. You want the jerk bait to stop and tilt off to the side kick off this way, kick off this way. It's going to be changing its angles constantly by having that soft tip and throwing the tip back. This time of the year you want to look for bait. Idle back in the creeks, idle back in the coves, look for shad on your graph. Get out on these long points, look for suspended fish off these points. This is the time of the year these fish are going to start moving back, getting ready to spawn, and that type of uh, jerk bait will catch them for sure. Play around with your tree. If your water temperatures are cold, you want to let this thing pause. If it's say it's 40 degree water temp, let it pause 6, 8, 10 seconds between each time you twitch it. So twitch, 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 let it sit for 6 or 8 seconds. Again, with the suspending river to sea jerk bait, it's just sitting down there perfect in the strike zone. The warmer the water, the little bit less pause you're going to have. The water temperature gets up in the 50s or in the 60s, start, start lessening your pause. Give it some nice erratic action, play with the retrieve a little bit, get out there, find some fish, and you'll have a lot of fun. See you guys.